Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Over the next few sessions we'll be examining the stereoscopic capabilities of Autodesk Smoke. This includes creating clips on the desktop as well as editing in a stereoscopic timeline and compositing in a 3D stereoscopic environment. We'll also be looking at the deliverable types for outputting this format. Now you'll need to have a basic understanding of the stereoscopic practices but I'll be handing off a few tips. Ultimately that type of research is down to you. Now before we get started you're going to need a pair of anaglyph glasses which are red and cyan tinted. I'll cue you when to put the glasses on so that you can see the stereoscopic result. We're going to start off by first looking at how you can create stereoscopic clips on the desktop in Autodesk Smoke. When bringing media into Smoke you are always bringing in the left eye and the right eye separately. The two clips are then combined into a stereo clip. In order to do this we would have to have our material loaded on the desktop and we would choose the stereo option from the blue pop-up button located to the left of the interface. Inside this menu you will see a stereo track button. When you have selected it you will get the option to create a stereo track. Following the instruction the red arrow cursor represents the left eye and the blue arrow cursor represents the right eye. Using the red cursor click on the top left hand corner of the left eye clip and then the cursor will turn blue. Using the blue cursor click on the top left hand corner of the right eye clip. When the cursor turns white click anywhere on the desktop to make a stereo clip. Examining this clip you will see the S symbol which indicates that this is a stereoscopic clip. As a hard and fast rule for 3D stereoscopic practices the left eye and the right eye must be the same duration. If the left eye is longer than the right eye then Smoke will refuse to make a stereoscopic clip because your eyes need to have the same amount of frames per eye to avoid any issues. What is also useful about the way Autodesk Smoke makes stereo clips is that if you conformed a left eye timeline and a right eye timeline you can use the exact same technique to create a stereo track. Now let's focus on how we can view stereoscopic clips. Select the stereoscopic clip we have just created and switch the source area layout from the thumbnail to the standard view. To the left of the player view you can enable the view option. With the top pop-up set to stereo you can now choose the stereo mode that works for you. You have a choice of two modes, anaglyph or interlaced. With an interlaced setting you will need a 3D stereoscopic interlaced monitor in order to view the material correctly. You can also set which field is assigned to each eye. For the purposes of our video we will use anaglyph. Now put on your stereoscopic anaglyph glasses. You should now be able to see this material in 3D. Anaglyph offers a few modes when working with stereoscopic material. Here we are using the classic Dubois. You can also use other modes to monitor the material as well. For example you could see the image in mono, eyes blended together or use the difference viewers to check the offset between the eyes. We'll just set the viewer back to Dubois for our example. I'll change the layout to the source record viewer through the source area layout so we can focus on editing. Now editing in stereoscopic should be exactly the same as editing normally in monoscopic mode. The only difference is you are dealing with two video streams as opposed to one. The timeline will reflect this in the tabs and patching when you start to edit. I'll select one stereoscopic clip from the list and I will set a quick in and out point. You should see that even in the editing mode Smoke is able to display our images in 3D. Now I've not created a timeline to edit into just yet. We'll let Smoke take care of the settings for us. By pressing the overwrite button between the two viewers Smoke will create a new timeline based on your first edit. You can double click on the timeline clip to expand it out and you can see what we have. To the left of the timeline you can see the labels indicating a stereo track with the left eye and the right eye on layer 1. I can also pull the window slightly over to show the track labels. 
I'll grab a second clip in the list and mark this up too in the source viewer. When I overwrite this into the timeline, the track patching will edit it onto the same stereo layer as the first clip. To the right of the interface, I will click the Home button to fit the timeline to the window. The stereoscopic timeline enforces the rule that the right eye and the left eye edit must always stay in sync. You can see that when I select an element in the timeline, it always selects both eyes. If any trimming or refining was done to the edit, it is always enforced. This is one of the fundamental rules of working in stereo. The left eye must receive the same image as the right eye at all times. Otherwise, it'll be extremely uncomfortable for any viewer as well as potential headache inducing. The chain icon located to the left of the timeline is what locks the two eyes together. You can unlock it temporarily if you need to slip the footage of an eye or apply effects to an individual eye, but as soon as you attempt an editorial change, the lock will automatically kick in, preventing major editorial issues. The next timeline function you need to be aware of is the convergence setting for the left and right eye. This will control our depth perception. Now normally on location, the depth perception is determined at the shoot, but you do still have the added flexibility of being able to change that depth perception at the finishing stage. To alter the convergence, you would select the clip in the timeline and apply an Axis Soft Effects to the clip which is located to the left of the interface. This applies the Axis Soft Effects to both eyes. In the menu beneath the play controls, you would need to change the pop-up from Surface Settings to Stereo Settings. With the Stereo Slider, you can adjust the convergence of the left eye and the right eye. However, my tip to you is to hold the spacebar down when sliding the value to keep the incremental adjustments fairly small to avoid quite an extreme effect. In the next video, we'll be examining a multi-layered stereoscopic timeline as well as dealing with regular footage in a stereoscopic edit. That and much more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.